Good morning. Welcome to Heartland Community Church. We'll go ahead and get started with announcements. We've got quite a few announcements going on. So, real quick, if you have lost women, if you've lost your cell phone, we found a cell phone in the women's restroom. If you did lose your cell phone, it's in the sound booth. Please contact one of us, and we'll uh, get you your cell phone back. It was found this morning. So, uh, Connection cards, uh, we encourage you to fill those out. There's a card in front of you. It's for if you're new here visiting or if you have any changes, uh, email changes, address changes, we'd like to have you fill that out so we can get you the proper information for the church. Prayers, prayer requests, if you have any prayers requests, we encourage you to fill them out or email us. We'd like to pray for you. I will tell you the prayer request that came out last night about um, Candy Murphy's dad. It wasn't as bad as what they thought. He just had pneumonia, and they kept him overnight, so that's an answer to prayer. Um, marriage Bible study is uh, tonight um, at 6.30. This will be the final session, so we encourage you to come to that. Uh, Bible studies, there are several Bible studies going on Wednesday night at 6.30 with Scott and his wife. Uh, they'll be in the book of Peter, and then uh, Youth Sunday, there will not be be um, Youth Sunday is next Sunday, so we encourage you to come. The youth will do the worship and the service, as the whole entire service. So we encourage you to encourage them. We encourage you to come and hear what they have to say. International Men's Prayer Time. Men will meet again for prayer on Wednesday, March 1st at 6:30 in the morning. There was probably about 20 some men that met this last Wednesday, so I encourage you to come. It's a come and go. Uh, it, it usually is from 6.30, 7.30, but we understand we all have jobs. So if you have to leave prior to, we, that, that is fine. Women's Bunko Night is back um, for March 3rd at 6 p.m. Ladies age 18 and older come fellowship and have a great time of playing Bunko. Uh, don't know how to play, they will teach you. Um, so we encourage, it says, please bring five, five dollars and a finger food or snack to share. If you have lost any items like cell phones or jackets, other Bibles, there's a box beside Lori's office. We encourage you to go through there and collect your items or we'll be donating that stuff here shortly. And then we have Cindy Dayton that's going to come up here, or uh, I guess Steve Dayton is going to come up here and talk about uh, Mercy Meals and Orphan Grain Train. Thank you, Steve. I'm Steve Dayton. My latest claim to fame is I'm the husband of Cindy Warner. Uh, she was supposed to uh, be here this morning to talk to you about uh, her latest project. Uh, this was an opportunity for her to spend a four-day weekend in Colby with her mother. I told her that I would take over this job. I need brownie points. Uh, so, so you, rather than the beauty, you get the beast. Uh, Cindy is spearheading a project through the uh, Orphan Grain Train Distributing Point in Warnet, which is actually hosting this project, uh, putting together packets of food through an organization called Mercy Meals, which is loosely uh, tied to Orphan Grain Train out of Norfolk, Nebraska, their headquarters. Um, Orphan Grain Train delivers, collects and delivers food, medical equipment, clothing, various types of things to uh, disaster areas and poverty-stricken areas around the world. On March 25th, they're going to be sponsoring a um, packaging event putting together these packages of Mercy Meals, which include uh, rice, dehydrated vegetables, soy, chicken flavoring, and about 30 different minerals and vitamins. So they are uh, nutritious meals. A package of meals such as this costs about 96 cents to produce. And we have to buy all the materials that go into it. And this is all volunteer, all donation. On March the 25th, we're going to hold a packaging event. It's going to be hosted here at 
heartland community church in the community room will be setting up six different stations and each station takes eight to ten people so we are looking for volunteers to man the stations to do the packaging each package costs about ninety six cents i might have already mentioned that will feed six people now i'm a beer drinker i drink a beer park probably every day and it takes about two dollars to put the root in that beer <laughs> and that two dollars will put together a meal that will feed twelve people each one of these packets will feed six people six meals um, so if you uh, need more information about that would like to volunteer would like to donate all of the money that we collect we have to have about eighty five hundred dollars to be able to package a little over well eight thousand three hundred and thirty three meals or packages which represent about fifty thousand meals Orphan Grain Train has up to date fed four and a half million meals through Mercy Meals and so of course relatively small organization they're very very active um, I believe that one of the members here Becky Vanderhoof is she here back in the back she's a regular volunteer at the distribute at the uh, collection station in Larned and she can tell you more about it than I can I'm sure so if you have any questions would like to volunteer would like to set up donations. I will be at the uh, welcome desk after the service. And I noticed that Laurie has put together uh, a little display out there as well with uh, uh, the uh, sign up sheets for volunteers. Not only do we need volunteers to actually be on a team to uh, package the meals, and the team will be there for about an hour and a half. Our sessions are 9, 11, 1, 3, and 5. And so each team will be at a station for about an hour and a half. And then when that team leaves, new team comes in, that gives us about a 30 minute transition point so that we can, we can train the new team right quick. Um, teams can be made up of anybody. Uh, we're, uh, it's suggested that if we have children on the team that they be supervised and be probably at least 10 years old. But they can certainly do this project as well. Other types of volunteers we're going to need are individuals that might be willing to help to unload and set up uh, Friday evening, the 24th, uh, prior to the packaging event on Saturday, the 25th. And then at the end of our last session, which would be about uh, 6 o'clock, then we're going to load this back up on the truck so that it can be taken back to Norfolk, Nebraska and put in their uh, distribution uh, section for distribution around the world so if you have any questions concerning that I will be available uh, if you have any questions about orphan grain train Becky can tell you all about it I'm sure uh, so whatever interest or that you have in serving this all-volunteer project we would be happy to, to uh, uh, include you as you know, this is, this is part of uh, God's work in the world, and we need to step up to do God's work. Thank you very much.
Good morning. Good morning, Heartland Church. Welcome. Any th anybody that is new here today, we, we welcome you. Uh, it is not a coincidence that you are here. God ordains all of our steps, and there's no such thing as coincidence. So we hope you feel loved and welcomed, and, and what an honor it is for all of us that have been here just to join again together and just to worship the Lord. I ask you to stand and just look around the room and, and just give a shout-out to who's going to be worshiping right beside you this morning. It is an honor to come into your presence, Father. We just thank you, Lord.
Expect to see your glory, King Jesus. Thank you, Father. Before this next song, I've had a song going through my head all last week. Does anybody ever have that happen where it just, you go to bed and it's there and you wake up and it's there and all day long and, and it was this next song and it's called I've Got a River of Life and um, Virginia sings this song so beautifully and I, I called her and I said, V, will you, will you sing this song for us? And she was gracious. She said, sure, I'd love to. But before we sing it, I just, I just thought, you know, when God does that, I thought I really need to dig in deeper and see what he's trying to tell me. Um, and let me find my notes here. But the song goes, I've got a river of life flowing out of me. And then in the chorus, it says, spring up a well within my soul. And that song's talking about the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. And when I started thinking about the wells, like the wells that were in the Bible days, um, the physical wells, they were, they were normally outside the city. They were hard to get to. There was often a lot of strife that went around that. And if you were a stranger, you had to ask for permission to drink of the well. And typically it was um, dark, hard to, it was deep, and it was hard to retrieve the water. And so then I started thinking about the living water that's, that's in me, the Holy Spirit that the Lord gave us. Um, it's unlimited. It's, ex it's unexhaustible. It's, it's free. Um, it's not affected by the time or the season that we're living in. It's not really affected by the things that are shaken in this world. Um, and, it, it's, and it satisfies. And in John 7, 37 and 38 and 9, the Lord says, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scripture said, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. And when he speaks of living water, he's speaking of his spirit. And I, I, I've been thinking about my life lately, and it's not always roses. Some days I feel like I'm walking through a wilderness. And so I thought, I need to sing to my soul and say, spring up a well in me because I need that living water as, as, because he's going to be our reviver. If, if you're feeling depleted, if you're feeling lost and alone, he's going to be your restorer. If you're feeling bruised or beaten down, he's, he's the answer. He's, he's the only answer. And he's your fullness when you're empty. So as we, uh, as Virginia leads us in this song, it's such a powerful song, and I hope that you, you hear the words in that. I, I feel like, I mean, in Joel, it says he's going to pour out his spirit in the last days, and I feel like we're there. And so I feel like today, um, he's going to pour out his spirit. He said he is. He promised. And so if you need that river of living water, just sing. Just sing it. And just say, yes, that's mine, God. I receive it. Um, spring up a well inside my soul. I need your living water. I need to be whole. I need to be free. I need peace. He's, he's all of that. So let's sing together. start off. I think I can't hear up here. Okay. I'm going to turn my pack up.
This is a new song, but it's just all scripture. It's Isaiah 6.
you, Jesus. Father, we worship you because of your holiness. Father, we thank you. May you take your place here, King Jesus, in our hearts and in this service, God. Father, I pray that those that are here, that they'll see and hear and feel the love of God. And Father, have your way in this church service. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everybody. Let's do it again. Good morning. Are you glad to be here? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Do you know that there's a stronger power than you've ever felt in your life when you come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior? You get to tap into that power. When you find knowledge of the Holy One, that last song was so anointed you could feel the Holy Spirit moving in it. You were looking for it. Let the grace of God so rule your life that you have so much peace because you know about grace. Grace is a gift received at Christ's expense. So, whatever you're going through, God's already paid for it. Cody, because He paid for it, you get to have peace. You get to have a sound mind, Dean. You get to have a sound mind. Because it's our mind that starts to rule us. And when you allow the power of the Holy Spirit to rule you, your mind changes. And you find peace. And without the ruling of the Holy Spirit, you won't find peace. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. Seek after righteousness. Go after repentance. Revival comes when you repent. Revival comes when there's forgiveness. Thank you, Misty, for speaking that out last night. We were at the hospital last night visiting someone, and I saw the power of the Holy Spirit go into that hospital room, and I saw a man who was sick get better. But I went in with compassion and expectancy, and I wept and I cried before I went in because I said, God, not this time. This man's not going anywhere. And the Holy Spirit came into agreement with me. And I wept. And I went in and prayed. And I gave God the glory. And then I came out and I'm sitting by Brian. And Brian goes, I keep getting James 5.14 in my head. It's stuck in my head. Well, hey, what's James 5.14? Call the elders of the church and anoint their head with oil and the sick will become healed. And so you know what we did? Brian and I went back in. I'm glad you brought the oil, Misty. And we anointed his head with oil. And he started to speak when he couldn't speak before. Believe it or not, I saw it. 
but the Holy Spirit, the title of today's sermon is a God that's stirring. A stirring God. And I saw the Spirit start to dwell up in you, Brian. I started to move, and it started to get me excited. And then he gave you that verse. And we couldn't remember what it was till we opened the Scripture and go, Oh, my goodness. Come, come with me, Brian. I said, but how are we going to get in there? Because they're only letting one in at a time. I said, Brian, just follow Pastor Troy and don't quit walking. When they open the door, I'm going to grab it, and we're just going in. We're just going in. And that's what we did. We just, follow me, Brian. Let's go. We got the authority of Jesus Christ with us, and we went, both went in. And the lady looked at us, and I said, hi, we're pastors. We're here to pray for that man. Nobody stopped us. If I'd have walked in in the flesh, they would have stopped me, Robert. They would have stopped me. But I walked in with the authority of Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit walked in with me and Brian. And I said, the elders of the church are here. We're going to pray. What does, that, what does that mean when you say the elders of the church? It means a mature Christian. It doesn't mean a title in a church. It means a man or woman of God that's mature in the faith that carries the power of the Holy Spirit to pray over someone and believe that they're going to be healed. Now, I think this is a day where God wants to heal somebody in here. But you've got to be willing to ask for it, and you've got to be willing to receive it. The God that we put in a box wants out. We put him in a box and said those things won't happen. The Spirit of God doesn't belong in a box. It belongs in you. Jesus left us with a helper, an advocate, the Holy One. And his power and his grace goes before us. And when we're reminded of what he has done for us, can you pull up, and this is out of order, I'm sorry, Trent, John chapter 14, verse 26. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you what? All things, all things, not just one, but all things. And bring you to remembrance of all things that I've said to you. What happened in that hospital room? The Holy Spirit brought to your mind the remembrance of that scripture, and it brought power into the room, Brian. That's what happened. He reminded you to go there when you didn't know it by heart. Now, I know you know the verse, but you couldn't tie it up in your mind. The Holy Spirit said, don't worry about it, Brian. I'll bring you the right verse. And then I'll open the doorway and let you guys in when the nurse ain't looking. That's what happened, wasn't it, Brian? You were right behind me. I said, Brian, don't stop. When she opens that up, I'm grabbing the handle, and we're going in. That's what we did, Pastor. You can pray for me later. Guys, God ordains those moments. He ordains them. And when you walk in with belief in the power of the Holy Spirit, people become healed. Listen, John chapter 14, verse 26 that was the introduction to the disciples of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was saying here, you guys, I want to tell you about the Holy Spirit because I'm not going to be here, Jesus said. I'm, I'm leaving in the physical sense. And, and physically, we didn't get to walk with Jesus. We didn't get to touch him like they did. But we believe because of what Scripture says. But the Holy Spirit is already living in us. Well, the disciples, this is something very new to them. They got to walk with Jesus. They got to talk with Jesus. They got to hug Jesus. They got to talk to him. And Jesus knew that they were doomed if he didn't send them a helper. And then he said, when I'm gone, everything I taught you boys, the Holy Spirit's going to remind you of. The Holy Spirit is in everywhere every place and every heart at one time. Now, I don't want to put limitations on Jesus, but when Jesus was here, he walked from town to town. He was in one town at a time. The Holy Spirit is right here today. The Holy Spirit is in any church that is preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ that he died on the cross for your sins and he was resurrected. So you get that helper in what you're going through today 
to give you a remembrance of the wisdom of what Scripture says. Jesus said that if you, or not J, James, the book of James says that if you ask for wisdom, it says God gives without fault. You receive it if you're not double-minded. That word fault blows me away. What, it, what it's meaning is that, is that God doesn't look at your past and your mistakes and says, no, I'm not going to give you wisdom. If you believe and ask for wisdom, you receive it without fault. It's free. You get it. Do you know the best decisions I ever made was when I was walking in the Holy Spirit? You know the best business decisions I ever made is when I was walking in the Holy Spirit. You know the worst ones I ever made that cost me a lot of money is when I wasn't walking in the Holy Spirit because God didn't tell me to do it. You mean to tell me right there in your office, Dave, or out there digging a trench, the Holy Spirit can tell you how to do it. He can tell you where the pipe is in the ground so you don't hit it, the electrical line. All you got to do is pray and ask because he knows. But too many times our prayer and our Holy Spirit is the last thing that we ask for. I heard Graham Cook say this one time. It was so funny. He said he was talking to this individual. And he said, hey, we're just, we're chasing after the Holy Spirit. We're in here worshiping. We're chasing after the Holy Spirit. And he goes, really? Where'd the Holy Spirit go? What are you chasing after him? He's right here. You don't have to chase after nothing. You just ask for it and it'll show up. But I think what that person was saying is we're going to worship in a stronger way. We're going to worship and bring glory to God and allow the Holy Spirit's presence to be poured out on us. Does that make sense? Spring up a well. My wife had that song on her heart and I had the title of Stirring God. Hadn't talked till the end of the week, till all that stuff was wrote on our hearts and on our paper. I'm t here to tell you today that when your marriage is solid and that when you're serving Christ together, the Holy Spirit moves in each of you as a couple, that you become one and you change people's lives together. Get to that point in your marriage, to where God is speaking to both of you and giving you the same word, the same knowledge that that James says that you can have. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Paul's focusing on God's eternal glory. Here, Paul's saying afflictions are just for a moment. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. There is freedom. But we all, with an unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just by the Spirit of the Lord. An unveiled face. When you look at someone, sometimes their face is glowing because they're flowing in the power of the Holy Spirit and you know God's presence is on them. People's faces change all the time. I was riding in a truck this week with Brett. You, some of you guys know Brett. And him and I love to have conversations while we're at work about the Lord. And one day he just looked over at me in the truck and he said, Troy, your countenance has changed in your face today. And I said, wow, is it that obvious? I was full of the joy of the Lord. The day before wasn't so good, but the day after was great. And he could tell the difference just by the way my face looked. See, there's something different about you when you understand that God gives you a peace which surpasses all understanding. And that the things that often shake us shouldn't shake us because we just, you guys, we don't answer to man, we answer to God. And until you figure that out, that you got to quit trying to play favor with everybody and look at God and follow what God's telling you to do, then life gets easier, life gets better. And nothing can change eternity in your life except your relationship with Jesus Christ. And when that's right, you should have peace because nothing else matters. Can you pull that back up, Trent, Corinthians, that chapter, verse 17, is that possible? I want everybody to say that verse. 
Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty, there's freedom. When you're walking in the Spirit of the Lord, you get freedom from your circumstance. You have freedom to worship in a different way when you know the Holy Spirit. You have freedom to walk in peace when you know the Holy Spirit. You have freedom to understand the Scriptures because it says He'll give you a remembrance of all things. There's all sorts of freedom when you walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Far too long have churches left out the movement of what the Holy Spirit is trying to do in your life because religion has squashed it. Far too long we've discounted a, an encouraging word of knowledge for somebody because we didn't know that the Holy Spirit worked that way. Man, when I grew up, I heard someone praying in tongues. I thought a demon was in them. But when I started studying the Scripture, no, I'm just telling you the truth because that's what religion did to me. No, that's a private prayer language for that person in their closet to allow the dwelling of the Holy Spirit to come up in them and give them wisdom and knowledge. Sometimes it's misused. Listen, everybody can have that gift. Not everybody has it, but everybody can have the gift of praying in tongues. Everybody. God just doesn't say, hey, Troy, you can have it, but when Dave's out there in the workplace, I'm just going to leave him high and dry. That's not what he does. He gives it, and you faithfully ask. It took my wife two years to, to pray for it and receive it. Two years. Me, I guess I was just dumb enough. God said, I got to help him, and it just happened overnight in the kitchen. It happened when the guys laid hands on me when Dave and Al prayed over me. Boom. What was that? But it changes your life. The power of the Holy Spirit. He's the third person of the Trinity. It's the moving voice of God. And if you want, you know, in Kentucky, the revival's going on, but the Holy Spirit is moving and making you bold and making them bold and encouraging them to go on and giving them strength. The Holy Spirit is wanting to do a stirring. He's wanting to make us bold so that we can go in and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. I tell you what, Wednesday morning, the men showed up here to pray. Every other Wednesday, men, were having prayer here at 6.30. And we went off and we prayed by ourselves. And I said, guys, and Brian and Trent, John, Kevin, you guys did an awesome job of leading that. But one thing before we walk away, I said, guys, when you go to your corners and you're praying, ask God for a word. Ask him what he wants today, and then let's come back together. And he gave the word effective prayer. The, the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And he gave unity. He's been saying a whole lot about unity. But when you had 13 men hold hands in a circle and all pray together, I felt power. Because the Holy Spirit was in each man. We're stronger together than apart, you guys. We're stronger together than apart. Sometimes when you're climbing a mountain, you need someone else to reach out and grab your hand and pull you up. Whose hand are you willing to reach out and pull up? Might be your enemy. Are you willing to save your enemy from going over the cliff? Because the Bible says to love your enemies. Love those who despitefully come against you. Love your enemies. And the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. He'll teach you a remembrance of, of what Jesus said love truly is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's remembering a certain kind of love. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Can you feel that? Do you feel that when he says, thank you, Jesus, I love you? He's wanting to change your life. He's wanting to fill your heart with love. Doggone it, man. We got to start sharing the love of Christ. And, and 
we encouraged the men when they left. I said, you guys find one person this week, we were standing right here, that you can pray with, that you can help them, that they're hurting. Ask God to bring you one. Ask him to put you on a customer's doorstep and work to change your life. Be intentional. Jesus was intentional in every conversation that he had. Man, I feel strength in Jesus today. I didn't give you this verse, Trent, back there, but John chapter 7, verse 38. He that believeth on me, this is, this is the King James Version. As the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Where is the Holy Spirit in that verse? Chapter 7, verse 38. The Holy Spirit lives in your belly. Rivers of living water. When you're praying in tongues, it starts to build up in you. It starts to flow up in you. When you're praying and believing in Christ and talking about his love, it comes from your belly, not your mind. Make decisions from your gut. I heard Jensen Franklin say one time in his sermon, he said, God has that, he's like a moth. That still small voice behind your ear, your conscience, and out of your belly. He sends a gentle moth to speak to you the first time. And he's just whispering wisdom in your ear. He's whispering the Holy Spirit's whispering in your ear. But you don't listen because you're busy. Or you're watching too much TV. So then the second time he sends the eagle, and the eagle takes his claws and grips into your shoulders a little bit. You start to have a little bit of pain. A circumstance comes into your life, but God uses it. There's a little bit of pain. You're not listening, but the eagle grabs a hold. And when you don't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit through the eagle, he sends the lion. And when the lion grabs a hold of you, you better be listening. And when you don't listen to the lion, there's nothing else. Nothing else he can do for you. But the prayers of a righteous man avail us not a lot. God's telling us that our prayers change things. And I'm asking you guys to listen to what the Lord's saying. He's wanting to introduce you to the Holy Spirit, who the Holy Spirit is. And when you have the Holy Spirit comes on you, He tells you what to pray over somebody. He tells you what decision to make. And He moves you into a hospital room when only He could do it. God has a whole different set of rules when it comes to the Holy Spirit. He changes the atmosphere. Romans chapter 15, verse 13, a spiritual hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of what? You get your power from the Holy Spirit. And when you come to know Jesus Christ, when you've asked Jesus Christ as your Savior, you get the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is always working in your life, but it works a whole lot better when you know this. Tracy Cook said it best. He said, I serve a talking God with a talking book. Did you hear that? This, we have a talking God with a talking book. I've never forgot it when I heard him say that. Do you love his word? Do you know his word? Listen, guys, you can know all the scriptures in the world. You can have all the scripture memorized in the world, and it doesn't mean nothing if you don't know how to share it. So learn five of them and share those five. Romans 10, 9 is a good place to start. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. If you only learn one, learn that one. And then go share it. Go share it. Amen? Man, do you love him today? Acts chapter, chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. How do you get power? When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. Do you know that you can't witness effectively without the Holy Spirit? Read that verse. It, he says the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and then you shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. That means everywhere. That's not just for the disciples. He was talking to the disciples, obviously. 
when Paul became a believer, a true believer, and left religion behind, God gave him the power of the Holy Spirit. And then he became powerful, and then he became effective. What is the Holy Spirit wanting to do in your life that you're quenching? Acts chapter 2, verses 25 through 28. God's sending help. For David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always, hold this verse, Trent, I, I saw the Lord always before my face, for he's at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Listen, if you're, if you're going through depression, if you're going through stress or any type of sickness, learn that. Because what David said is, I saw God before my face. I've read the scriptures. I've read the Torah, David said. And because I know Psalms, I got God right here before my face. So when I'm sick at my desk and I'm down and depressed, place God before your face. David said, when I go into battle, I got God before my face had his right hand and he cannot be shaken how many people don't want to be shaken because of their circumstance and just want to have joy and peace the only possible way you can do that is have God before your face next verse Trent. Therefore, my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Wow. Wow. When you know God and he's before you, you get to ha be cheerful. You get to rejoice. Don't stay in the depression mode. Stay in the cheering mode. You get to rejoice. And David rejoiced before he went into battle. They blew the trumpets and he worshiped. I promise you, before he went to battle, and he seeked the Lord on the battle and how to fight the battle. Someone needs to hear that. Someone needs to hear that. That when you seek the Lord and you move into him, you rejoice, and he tells you how to fight your sickness. He tells you how to fight your circumstance. He tells you how to fight your battle. Somebody needs to receive that. Because there's a battle that that's raging in your mind and it's not true it's not bigger than your God it's not bigger than your God be free my sister be free you're a good teacher stop doubting stop doubting Father God give my brother wisdom He's a true man of God. He's got a godly wife. Bless their marriage as I know you are. They have a good household in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you, you guys need to be in Scott's Bible study on Wednesday night, whoo, that man can teach. Dell can teach. We got good teachers. Wednesday night's at 6.30. We meet and he's going through the book of Peter. If you're not doing anything, and I know every other week, Pastor Marcel is teaching the women. I encourage you women to get in there. You guys, the Holy Spirit wants us to fellowship together. Hey, I, Marvin's got a great Bible study, and I went out there Monday night unannounced. I said, Marvin, I'm here. I just busted the party, didn't I? Man, Sharon, that was the best cornbread I've had, and Carrie cook, is a good cook. So I'm not demoting her, but that was good. I, I don't know if Marvin, you cooked it or Sharon cooked it, but I'm giving her the credit. <laughs> but it was fun because we were just amongst believers and we were having fellowship and we were sharing life and, and, and we went from talking about fishing to really fishing. I mean, in the Word. And we were learning how to fish for disciples and make disciples. See, when you share life together, you get to talk about lots of things. You get to laugh and you get to build one another up. Therefore, my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope. God wants you to rest in the hope of your salvation. At David's low, he said, let me enter into the joy of your salvation. I say that all the time when I'm down. God, if you'll just bring me back 
to the joy of your salvation. Bring me back to that joy. Because that's where the hope is, Jim. That's where the hope is. You get to live in that, Stacy. Live in the hope. The joy. Who doesn't want hope? Who doesn't want joy? I do. I want it all. Whatever God has, I want that. I got one amen out of this whole group. Thank you, Kim. I knew somebody was listening. God bless you guys. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Because in God's house are many mansions, and you know the joy of his salvation as well as anybody. And Kim, you're a good teacher too. And Dwayne, you're faithful. You are a faithful man. And I saw it in your workplace. If you're looking, God shows you. Encouraging people that come into your lives and change people's lives. They're about changing people's lives. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they all were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with what? That's where that other verse was back there. You they didn't become a witness till they had the Holy Spirit because they weren't going to be bold enough. Imagine Pastor Troy trying to lift up a 500-pound dumbbell. It's not going to happen. It's too weak. Gustavo might be able to, but not me. I'm glad he's my friend. You and Pastor Vic are going with me in the dark alleys. Everybody knows Diesel. He's out my back. You know that he told me they send him into places where they tie a rope on him and pull him out if it gets too bad? i got to find out where that was at. But I believe it. Listen, without the boldness, he would have never went in wherever he was going. That's the point. The disciples didn't become bold till the house was shaken, the upper room, and the Holy Spirit was poured out on them for the first time. And it says they spoke in different languages. That wasn't, there's a difference there. That's not praying in tongues. The language they were speaking was Spanish, Portuguese, English. Every, there was different origins of people, different cultures. And each disciple was speaking plainly to each person. Okay? But the point is today that... I believe God's wanting to pour out his spirit. And he said in the book of Joel, in the end times, I will pour out my spirit on all people. And that we would prophesy and dream dreams. That we would prophesy and dream dreams. Now, I want to share something with you that it's just a word picture. Because when we always have, you're not supposed to share every dream that God gives you. Pray into it or pray for what he shows you. And if he releases you to do that, then do it. But this is just a word picture I'm, I'm sharing with you guys. So Carrie and I were at the hospital last night. Brian and Misty, all you guys were there. And we got home late, so I just went in the house. I forgot to lock my chickens up. Now, anybody that knows about chickens, they go back in the shed by themselves. You don't have to herd them in like cows. They just go in. But the door was open. And I live right on the creek. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. I mean, they're there. Raccoons. And it's 12 o'clock or a little after. And all of a sudden, I have this dream inside my chicken house that my chickens were partially gone and the raccoons had got them and their heads were eating off and they were laying there. And it seems real to me in this dream. But I'm still dreaming. I'm like, oh, man, something got my chickens, and egg prices are high, and we're handing out eggs, and I just like having my chickens. And I'm right on the creek, and in the dream, I'm standing in the middle of the chicken pen, and here comes a lion up out of the creek. And it's getting ready to leap into the pen where I'm at. And I yell out, ah! And Carrie reach over and starts to pray. And I woke up, and I go, Oh, no, I forgot to lock up the chickens. And it's, Carrie goes, what time is it? I go, like, 12.05. She goes, well, that makes sense. 
And I go running out the door. And all of a sudden, I remember the part about the lion. <laughs> so I unlock the pin to my German short hair, and I go, you go first. <laughs> and so I go running out there, and the door was open, you guys. But everything was safe. Everything was calm. Now, you guys can, we can say, oh, that wasn't real, but I believe that raccoons or whatever, foxes were coming, and God just showed me in the Holy Spirit that I needed to get up at midnight and go out and lock my chickens up. I said, honey, what if I would have told that dream? My dog's name's Arrow. I said, what if I would have said, hey, Arrow, I had a dream that there's a lion out there. Do you think he would have went? He'd have been like, thank you. But the point is, you guys, that's something small, but it's, it's big when you have animals and you don't want to lose them. God gives discernment with the Holy Spirit. Before the enemy attacks, God speaks by the Holy Spirit most often and shows you a way out or shows you wisdom to walk through the pain, shows you wisdom to walk through the suffering, and he can even save your chickens. Nothing is unimportant to God if it's important to you. discernment by the power of the Holy Spirit. Old men will dream dreams. I guess I'm old. Whew. God's preaching today. Worship team, will you come forward? Romans 8:26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. So a, ma a person's weak, they're faint. They're not strong. They're not lifting the, the weights on the bar. It's too much. Life is too much. The weight is on your shoulder and it's bringing you down. But for, we, for we do not know what we should pray. We didn't know what we should pray last night, and he gave that verse to anoint the man with oil. We didn't know what to pray, but the Holy Spirit knew what to pray. But the Spirit himself makes intercession. Did he not make intercession last night? For us with groanings. With groanings. That's where the praying in tongues come in when you don't understand what you're saying and you're praying and the Holy Spirit is moving and groaning in you which cannot be uttered. Does anybody want the power of the Holy Spirit today? Does anybody want a double portion or a triple portion? Then raise your hands with me. Raise your hands high. Act like you mean it. Act like you want it because you're about to receive something. And it's not a... Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray over your church that they would receive a special anointing of the power of the Holy Spirit. And I know many people have a strong anointing on them already. But Jack Love, you're about to get a whole lot more. A whole lot more, my friend. So Jesus, send your Holy Spirit and do a shaking in here just like you're doing in Kentucky. And allow that double portion now to come on them. Give it to them now, Jesus. Amen. Receive it. Ask for it. Believe it that you've got it. And thank him for it. Thank you, Jesus, for the power of the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that it's going to bring in your life today because you're going to live and you're going to flow in it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
this dark you help us see There is only one salvation We believe We believe Father God, I just ask that you would speak louder than any voice. That you would overwhelm what overwhelms us. Come, Holy Spirit. Because these people don't need to hear from me. They need a word from you, God. So if I had to title this, I would say, Step Into... And it goes right along with what Troy was saying. God is stirring. He wants us to step into something. Colossians 1, 21 and 22. And you who were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, not moved away from the gospel, he presents us holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. Above reproach. 
it means to do like this. No criticism or disappointment can be made. It means you're perfect in his sight. And why are you perfect in his sight? Because Jesus died for you and he shed his blood for you. Ephesians 1, 4 says, he chose us. He chose us. He picked you specifically. He has a purpose and a plan for you. He appointed you as John 14, 16, I mean 15, 16 says, he called you, he chose you, he appointed you, he has a specific plan for your life. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. That means that it's not a mistake that you're here. You know, like Esther said, for such a time as this, you've been appointed and chosen to be here at this time. You're here for a reason. It's not a mistake. Mom and Dad didn't have you. God brought you into this world. God birthed you into this place. God picked you to be here at this time. And even though the world is scary, it's exciting because of what God is going to do. He's getting ready to come back. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame. Before him in love. Without blame means innocent. Above reproach means perfect. We are innocent and we are perfect in his sight. Romans 8.1 There's no condemnation for those in Christ because through him, through Christ, the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the laws of sin and death. That moment in the garden when Adam sinned, he brought sin on all man. But Jesus is the second Adam, and he came to redeem us. He came to set us free. If you keep reading Romans 8, it tells us that he set us free. For what the law could not do, God did. God did it. He came to save us. The law couldn't do it. The law that Moses gave can't save us. Them bulls and rams can't save us. Jesus is the one who saves. Exodus 26 describes the veil. So in the temple there was a courtyard. You could say that's the foyer. There was a holy place where the priests did their daily activities. And then behind the veil was the Holy of Holies, where God dwelt. He lived there. And so Exodus will explain all this to you. It tells you how they made the curtain, the veil, to separate the holy place from the Holy of Holies. This thing was like four inches thick, some people say. That's a thick curtain. Matthew 27. Jesus cried with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to the bottom. Two. And you know what that did? It allows me access to the throne. It allows me access to the Father. It allows me to step into 
what God has called me to do. Are you ready to step into what God has called you to? Are you ready to step into your position as a king, kid? Are you ready to step into? Are you ready to step into? Are you ready? Step into. Come on. Step into the Holy of Holies. Let's go to the Holy of Holies where your identity is, where your freedom is, where your healing is. You step through the veil into the Holy of Holies where there's freedom, where there's peace, where there's love, where there's joy, where there's everything that you need. And you don't do it on your own because the only way to the Father is as Troy's favorite verse is, John 14, 6. The only way to the Father is through the Son. When we step through that veil, when we step into the body and blood of Jesus, we step into the presence of God. We step into his glory. <laughs> we step into him. Come on, you guys. Step into what God has for you. Step into. Step into your authority. Step into your righteousness. Step into. Step into what he has for you. You have to come. I can't do it for you. Your neighbor can't do it for you. Your husband, your wife can't do it for you. You have to do it yourself. You have to take that step. Step into what God has called you. Step into it. Got it, my own. You guys, we just pray that the power of the Holy Spirit would come on you. And I believe this is the first step of even that happening more. If God's calling you to come forward and you just pray, come and step into new, something new that he has for you. When you take that bold step, when the priest stepped in the water, the water parted in the Jordan and all the Israelites crossed through. Joshua was faithful. What is God calling you to step forward to? The veil was torn in the temple when Christ was crucified. And now you get to go directly to Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. So step into what he has. If God's calling you to come forward for prayer, or you just want to step into and be obedient to what he's calling you, then I just pray you come forward now in the name of Jesus. There needs to be no embarrassment. No one's watching you. Everybody cares about the love of Christ in your life. But God's calling you to come forward for a step more of the Holy Spirit. He's calling you to come forward for more healing. He's calling you to come forward for more understanding. And some of you are holding back because you're worried about what other people think. God doesn't work like that. He doesn't care what other people think. He cares about you and the relationship with you and if you want something different in life listen guys God changed me if God can change me he can change you he can change you and he can save you and I encourage you if you need healing today to come forward for prayer come forward in his grace Search your heart. Search your heart. And don't tell him no where the Holy Spirit... Some of you are being nudged right now, and you're like, I don't know if that's real. Let me tell you, it's real. If you're having a single thought of coming forward, that's the Holy Spirit. That's how he works. That's how he brings anointing. Don't fight it. But what you're doing is coming forward for healing. What you're doing is coming forward for grace. What you're doing is coming forward to say, I'm making my God bigger than my own pride. Pride keeps you right where you're at. Pride keeps you right where you're at. I can't force you. I can't make you. But if God's prompting you, maybe he's not. 
but if he is, come forward. Because when you want to receive more, he wants to give you more. If you want changes in your life, if you've been praying about a sickness, if you've been praying about a job, if you've been praying about hurt, come forward. Because God likes action, because action is faith. Faith in action changes things. Changes things. Maybe God's saying, well, why don't you come forward for your grandchildren? Why don't you come forward for your children and intercede for them? Maybe someone in your family needs healing. God wants revival in the church. He doesn't want religion. He doesn't want things to stay the same in the church. Allow your heart to be changed. Allow your heart not to be troubled. You guys, it feels good and right to be bored with the Lord because He wants to set you free. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray over your people. I pray over your people, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you give them an anointing and a power of the Holy Spirit. Is there any way, Carrie, you guys can back up and play that song, Holy, Holy, that that was a moving moment. So I, I want, while they're singing, I, whatever you guys want to ask the Lord for, whatever you're praying about in your families and your marriages, just ask Him in prayer. Ask Him for a deeper relationship with Christ. Ask, ask Him for a more knowledge of what He's doing in your life. Ask Him for more power, more strength. And some of you prayer warriors, if you're up here, ask for prayer. Pastor Marcel, you just want to pray. Pastor Kim, would you pray with some people? Misty, Brian, would you guys pray over some people?